Welcome back to DXB Today, where I'm very happy to welcome Chloe King, the founder of Chloe Blue Diving Club and co-host of Paddle Out for COP28. Chloe, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. So we've got to talk about Paddle Out for COP28. How was it? Was it amazing? It was absolutely outstanding. We had hundreds of people there. Um, we had a great community vibe. There was um, stalls there doing um, mental health talks, ice baths, um, marine debris events. So it was, yeah, it was, it was really good. I always find it interesting people who are just so into aquatics. Like, what is it about the sea? What is it about water that you find so amazing? I guess it's that grounding purpose. It's the opposite of grounding. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you're, you're kind of yeah floating. But it's um, yeah, you just feel like in nature and. Um, it's calming the sound of the waves. Um, for me as a diver, I listen to my breath and my, my bubbles underwater. Um, the marine, it's just a completely, it's an escape. It's, um, yeah, it's a beautiful world down What there. is something that you have from memory that you've seen? Something that's really beautiful that you came across when you were diving here in the UAE? Oh, in the UAE, okay. So I think one, I mean, there's quite a few yeah. different things. <laughs> Um, so, uh, there's, I, I love the stingrays, okay. um, so you get lots of different types, marble rays, eagle rays, oh, wow. um, mobula rays, so there's a whole um, beautiful variety and the biodiversity in the UAE is absolutely incredible. Did you is, ever find any pearls like the, the locals of old? Um, <laughs> no, I haven't actually oh, gone yeah. pearl diving yet, but yeah, it's on the list for sure. If somebody does want to get into diving, because mm. we all know it's available, but a lot yeah. of people don't know how they get into it. How would you advise somebody who wants to take um, up diving? I think it depends on what level you are in terms of your swimming, in terms of how comfortable you feel in the ocean. Yeah. Um, so for someone that is absolutely petrified, I would probably say start with snorkeling. Yeah. Just start um, getting out there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's some amazing shallow reefs in Fajera specifically, um, especially in the front of Dibba Rock. It's like yeah. two, three meters. Um, there's lots of cute little black tip sharks um, that are very, um, they're, they're more scared of you than <laughs> That's good to know. I'm looking at the list of sports that we've re received about Benoit. I'm not <laughs> seeing diving on the list. Are, are, are you? not that into the aquatics? No, I, I, well, I'm not a very water person, but I, I like to take myself out of the, of the comfort zone. So I have a paddy and during COVID, I also do did some free diving. Okay, yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Chloe was saying, it's also about the breathing, isn't it? When mm -hmm. it comes to both ice baths, hiking, when it comes to water. And do you think mm -hmm. that also has a calming effect on you? Oh, 100%, because mm -hmm. you're taking long, deep breaths in, out, mm -hmm. and long, deep breaths um, in and out. Um, I think, yeah, it's your, your buoyancy is all controlled by your breathing. Yeah. Um, so it's really important listening to your breath and, and making sure you're, you're staying true. Correct me if I'm wrong, but people who are nervous, they will consume more air quicker than people mm. who are very calm. Yeah, generally. Um, they will, the, yeah, they're, they're... I could answer the question because yeah. I, went, <laughs> I went scuba diving. And it's just this idea, I'm not, I'm, I'm not where I should be. Yeah. I'm surrounded by water, so I was like, I need as much oxygen as possible, and you start breathing it all in. Yeah, it's kind of a, yeah, a bit of a catch-22 there. <laughs> yeah, so because when you breathe in heavily, um, there's more carbon dioxide, and that mm. makes you want to keep breathing. Yeah. Um, well, so if you're breathing slowly, um, your carbon dioxide buildup is a lot slower, so you don't need to breathe. It's interesting you bring that up because there are dangers to scuba diving. So, sure. what would you say those are for people who are thinking about getting into it and they're not, and maybe they're overblowing the dangers? What are the actual dangers? Um, so, obviously, one is definitely continuously breathing. <laughs> That's number, number one. Two is. Um, I would say always like sticking with your buddy. Sometimes people will just go off. Um, a lot of people I see with cameras and they're, you know, they see a turtle and they're following the turtle and all of a sudden they've lost the, you know, their buddy. And um, so obviously sticking, yeah, sticking closely with them. Um, coming up really slowly and um, going down slowly, making sure you're equalizing properly. Um, but it's just following the basic guidelines as long as you're, you know, listening to your dive computer. Um, and making sure you're 
Yeah. And for someone like me, like I've mm. never went oh. snorkeling or scuba diving yeah. or anything, <laughs> um, I know that you give out uh, workshops. So can you please tell mm. us more about that as well? Yeah, so um, I do a variety of... So I can join as well at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I do the... I'm a paddy instructor. Mm -hmm. um, so I teach paddy, snorkeling, um, open water, all the way to pro level. Okay. Um, so I run uh, you know, some, uh, some of the courses are two days to about four days. Um, and then I really concentrate on the ocean conservation as well. So I do a lot of um, marine debris mm -hmm. workshops. I do coral conservation workshops, um, shark conservation, nice. and yeah, so um, yeah, a variety of things. So Incredible. Well, I love diving myself and yeah. I can sit and talk to you <laughs> forever about diving because I just love it. And yeah. I'm hoping to start doing some free diving, which is going to yeah. be the next thing, which involves a lot of breath work and mm. working with your breathing. I'm about to start my free diving course in two weeks. Thank you so much, Chloe, for joining us. And we'll have to talk all things diving a little bit later. But now it's time for the spotlight. And today's spotlight is on a family owned catering company offering premium food, delicacies and unique menus for all occasions. A delight in every bite. They are driven by taste and exquisite presentation. This is Angela Rodriguez from Golden Chariot Catering. Hola, I'm Angela Rodriguez, the founder of Golden Chariot Catering. We specialize in international finger foods, canopies, and mini desserts. So we realized there was a gap in the market for international food as well as finger foods. And that's where we come in together to be solving that problem, to provide the best finger food with a global feast of canopies, mini desserts, and mini bites, which is perfect for events. Well, by God's grace, we've actually catered to A-list celebrities, VIP caterings, and I think our biggest milestone has been starting a second brand, a cafe called Essentials by GC Cafe. Most importantly, I think daily satisfied clients and customers are going to be milestones on a daily basis. 2020 was probably the biggest challenge with COVID, with schools shutting down, events stopping, people working from home. So it was all challenges thrown at us at a time where business came to a halt. But I think that gave us time to look back, learn and reconstruct, rebrand and come back better and stronger. So I feel every challenge is an opportunity in disguise and that's what we took and we're bigger and better today. I think Dubai is a bustling playground for entrepreneurs. I mean, business is everywhere and every opportunity is out there for you to go grab it. So it's not just about tall skyscrapers here, it's about elevating your business just as much. It's time now for the Delhi Roundup, Amy. So what do you have for us? Oh, well, Ahmed, I will tell you. Hatta is the favorite travel destination this winter season. An ideal camping site with less than a two hour drive from Dubai. There's hiking, biking, kayaking, Hatta Wadi Hub, Hatta Aerial Adventure Park, and horse riding. Oh, my, wow. One of my <laughs> favorites there. <laughs> oh, well, I was going to say you forgot about the Bear Grylls experience, but that's in Ras Al Khaim. I got confused. But Hatta is amazing. Do you spend yeah. a lot of time there, Benoit? Um, for me, for me, hiking, I, I, I try to get away from all the people mm -hmm. and Hatta is so super well organized, but I, I would tell people if they want to have no risk and, and w the trails they've done there is absolutely amazing. Uh, they are, they are, you can't get lost. You will always be f close enough to get water and all. It's very safe for families and all that. I, I you like the yeah. drive going there. Because it's very calm getting to the yeah. point. And of course, every time I have people coming over from all around the world, I like to take them to Hatta because it's such a stunning view that you wouldn't expect to see here in the country, especially the kayaking between the mountains yeah. and all of that. I say I've been sorry, Thorne. No, it's an amazing, <laughs> it's an amazing <laughs> site as well. When you take visitors on yes. that note, yeah. the yeah. massive Hatta sign. Yes, yeah. you've yes. got to see that. It's bigger uh, than the Hollywood sign, right? It yes, is. it is. I'm sure Humongous. It is. <laughs> but I've, I've been lucky enough to actually stay there in uh, Hatta. I did the glamping experience. Nice. Of course you did, Amy. And then, of course I did. <laughs> glammed it up. And um, yeah, and I did the kayaking. We went hiking. There's archery axe throwing well, yeah. and archery there. Yeah. Did the horse riding, obviously. And it's such a great way to escape from the city and feel like you are 
out in the wild with a few home comforts. Yeah, you feel you very know. zen. Very yes. zen. It takes you to a place where it's... Because it's very loud in the city and it's so much happening all the time. So when you go over there, you just disconnect from the world. It's, it's a nice place to be. Well, it's the subject of being outdoors, isn't it? And Benoit, like, we've been talking about it a lot, but I want to go into a bit some of the benefits that you get from just being outdoors, going to somewhere like Hatta. Now, we know about the breathing. What else? Is it the fresh air? Is it the, is it the sunlight? What is so beneficial with being outdoors and going to places like Hatta? Well, well you mentioned a few things uh, on the water that is, it's not grounding. But if, if you look at what, is the mo what are the most important things to have a healthy life, first one is sleep, okay? The second one is to get the morning light. And I, I, I tell you, go and hike in the morning, see the sunrise, it gives you so much energy. Then take off your shoes, okay? Even if you're on the rocks, but especially when you are on the sand, ground yourself, get some amazing energy. Then do some breathing and then get some nice food. Okay, yeah, no, I like that. I, li yeah. I like one of the things the you said. <laughs> well, Benoit, we're gonna have more guests in the studio obviously very very soon but what else do we have coming up on the show cup 28 just wrapped up and we have the highlights for you and we get into a conversation with the leading curators of social culinary experiences bringing together the food community in this very city it's cucina del sul plus we've got a special performance later tonight on the show so stay tuned